hope for ocean. Do you want to tell us about male chicks in the egg industry? Ocean, want you take it? Uh, want is a strong word. <laughs> Uh, this is, you know, painful stuff. Um, it, the short of it is that male chicks in the egg industry are of no use to the industry. So they're they're uh, killed at birth. Sometimes they're gas. Sometimes they're thrown in garbage piles where they are crushed under the weight of other chicks. These are little babes and, you know, they're not desirable for eggs. So um, they're killed very quickly or, yeah, put through a grinder, um, maybe turned into pet food. Um, it's, you know, I, I suppose it's better than living longer in torture, but sort of like welcome to the world, little one. Now we'll kill you right away, you know. Um, not, nothing, nothing, um, you know, Walt Disney would have wanted to make a movie about. Um, so, you know, we obviously can, can do better. And that's ultimately the whole point here, isn't it? That as painful as it is to face all of this, the good news is we can make choices that, say not on my not on my watch you know i'm, I'm not going to be a part of this i get to be a part of something else that that contributes to a more ethical and a more beautiful world and, and by the way be healthier in the process and that's really the point here i think oh yeah. maybe i'm a little confused what what does it mean the male chicks in the egg industry who what does that mean oh eggs are uh you know there's going to be boys and girls right but boys don't lay eggs because they can't so girls are laid turned into layers um and the boys are are killed at birth essentially yeah they're, they're not uh they don't grow fast enough uh to be profitable for meat because they're from the layer uh strand of chicken so they're just killed at birth uh and, and i'll just add you know we're coming up on easter and it's so interesting to look around at the Easter cards and Easter images, and you see these beautiful, sweet, little yellow fluffy chicks that are symbolizing, you know, um, uh, new fresh starts and springtime and love and compassion and uh, gentleness and all these beautiful things in our society. Yet we are killing the same beautiful, sweet creature by the billions in the egg industry. It's, it's mind boggling, uh, the, the disconnect, the dissonance. So, uh, you know, keeping that in mind. And also, I'll also um, say that everything that Ocean said applies to, again, organic and cage free and free range. They, you know, it's not profitable on these farms, no matter what the label, to hatch your own chicks. They're always sourcing the chicks from hatcheries, and that's where all these horrible things that Ocean was talking about happen. So, uh, so it applies to all those labels as well, unfortunately. So, when when they when an, a chicken is born, the variety that breeds eggs or well, lays eggs, the females are they leave them, they raise them, and they use them to lay eggs. And all the males, every single one in the in, who's born in the egg laying industry, if you're male at birth, you're automatically killed. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, almost all of them, they do use some for what are called packers in the mailboxes. So when they're shipping the females, the female chicks get shipped through the males or the regular male, you know how they treat boxes in the regular male. Uh, they get shipped to the uh, egg facilities they'll sometimes throw males in as packers, they call them packers, because they know that it is such a, a brutal process that some of the chicks may die. In, I mean, it's like they're gonna be without food or water for days, they're gonna be knocked around on the, the trucks and the airplanes. So, uh, so they know that some chicks may die in the process, so they'll throw males in hoping that it's the males that may perish because the, the industry wants the females, it's, it's awful. Just to put some numbers on this, there's about 300 million male chicks killed every year in the egg industry uh, in the US, about 6 billion worldwide uh, every year. And there are sexers, that's actually the name of an occupation, people whose job it is to look at all the little hatchlings and put them into two piles. And one of them's gonna be put in cages in most cases for their entire lives, so small they can't even lift a wing. and They'll be crammed together. They'll have their beaks cut off so they don't kill each other by pecking each other to death. They'll be fed a super unnatural diet. They'll 
be breeding grounds for antibiotic resistant bacteria. They'll stand, you know, over piles of feces and they'll lay eggs all day, you know, and that's, that's their life. And then the boys, of course, are gassed or electrocuted um, or ground up in grinders alive uh, to be turned into pet food for, in most cases. Um, I'm on the USDA website and I just typed in, what is the most consumed meat in the world? And it says, according to the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization, pork is the most widely eaten, eaten meat in the world, 36%. So if I understand all pork comes from pigs, that's what pork is, it's pig, is, right? So tell me about the life of a pig from beginning to end. I know we've talked about chickens and we've talked about cows, um, and we've talked about fish, pork being the most widely consumed meat in the world. How are pigs treated from beginning to end? Well, it's just, you know, again, it's the same thing. I mean, these are animals that are treated merely as objects to be used. And so um, you, go, you can see undercover videos or you can talk to people who have done undercover investigations and uh, it's, it's a terrible abuse. I mean, there's a hyper confinement, of course, is a big problem. The females are put in farrowing crates or they can hardly turn around. Their babies are, um, can just get in there and get some milk. And then they're, uh, then they're, they're raised and killed. They're all, all these animals are killed very young. Uh, but it's, it's, uh, it's really, I think, especially for some reason to me anyway, especially, um, significant in some way with pigs because they have they're so they're so like humans in many ways and uh, there's a saying by Winston Churchill yeah, people maybe know this one that you know a dog will look up to you a cat will look down at you but a pig will look you straight in the eye you know that idea they're they're, they're very intelligent they're very much like us in fact that you know and cannibals call humans long pigs you know <laughs> we I guess their flesh tastes similar to us so um, the, the, they were killing these animals that are so obviously friendly and intelligent. I mean, all the, we shouldn't be doing any of them, but, but um, it's just, uh, they scream, you know, they're terrified. They, uh, I've seen it. I mean, I've, I've seen like in Ecuador when people just kill them right in their yards and they're screaming and their blood everywhere. You know, I've seen that and I've seen them, you know, in the other factory farm situations too. It's, it's, uh, it's a really, you know, it's, it's, it's a, again, it's one of these things that there's tremendous suffering. There's the, 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 the acute suffering of the, the actual slaughter and killing. And then there's the chronic misery and terror of being hyper confined and a very intelligent animals. And very often these pigs will literally drive themselves into insanity by the hyper confinement, the, the boredom just stuck in one place all day for weeks and weeks and months and months on end. They start banging their heads against the bars, just whacking themselves. And, and then they're just, you know, you read about these workers, they have to, they have hypodermic needles that they stab over and over again into these animals with all kinds of uh, antibiotics that keep them alive or to make them gain weight or other drugs. And uh, until the needle finally breaks and they get another one, you know, they just, it's just uh, the most barbaric practice and people are eating this stuff. You don't have, have no idea. Uh, the toxicity, the misery, the violence, the tragedy of what it is. And it's all covered up. And we say hot dogs, we say ham, we say, you know, these, these words that uh, cover up the reality. And we put lots of mustard and ketchup and smoke it and do all these things. And uh, people say, oh, I love bacon. I could never go vegan. Yeah. And so it's, it, this is really the, the, the situation, you know, if we just shine a spotlight on it, the average person would be so horrified and, and their heart would break really with the realization of the suffering that they're causing by taking out their wallet and paying for it, voting it. That's where the crime is committed. When someone pulls out their wallet and pays for it, that's causing the animal to be stabbed right there. And so it's not just, it's not eating it. I mean, eating it's then we actually eat that violence, but we cause it when we take out our wallet. And uh, I think just making that point uh, helps people maybe to realize that they should think about it a little bit. Mm -hmm.